Hey there, Hedgie. Have you ever sat around thinking about why we should spend so much time learning mental math strategies? Well, guess what? Today we're gonna talk about that a little bit and you'll get to hear the answer too. So go grab your things and we'll get started. talk a little bit about why in the world we should work on all these different mental math strategies like we did yesterday and like we'll do today and going forward in a, a few other lessons. You know, math is one of those things that everyone can do and can be great at. And you have gotten so good at it. And one of the things that I like about how you do your math is that you get to think about things in a lot of different kind of ways. And sometimes the way you think about it and the way it works for you to think is different than the way your teacher thinks or the way I think or the way some of the other kids think. If you can move numbers and items around as we're talking about math on the desk or draw the numbers out in the different ways, you are going to eventually be able to do all of that in your mind, even when you get into division and multiplication and multi, multi, multi-digit numbers. So what that means isn't like, oh, wow, that's the most important thing to do, math in my brain. What it means is when you can do that, you will have a deep understanding of math. You will be better than good at math. And that is what I want for you. So hopefully you'll hang in there with me as we do a few more mental math strategies today. So if I give you the equation seven plus five, how do you solve it? Some of you might just have that fact memorized. You might just know what seven plus five is because you memorized it. Others of you might think about this number bond so that you can make 10. That's a really good way to do it. You know how much I love to make 10. We've got 10 here and two more, and that gives us 12. Still, others of you might get a little stuck at this stage yet so far, and you might count on seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and that's okay too. When it comes to equations like this, however, is it real easy to count on to get our answer for this equation? It's probably not as easy, although we could count on by tens, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, that's one way. We might remember that seven plus five equals 12, so seven tens plus five tens equals 12 tens. Or we might say, well, I don't remember what seven plus five is for sure, so I might use the number bond way instead. And in this case, I am going for making 100, picking up my 20. I still get the same answer of 120. All of these ways are really good ways to work on solving our equations. How about when we have an equation like this? Hedgie, I just love having your company when I'm doing math because it makes it even more fun. A minute ago, we recognized that seven plus five equal 12. So if I have a, an equation like this, 47 plus five, I could just add the ones first and then add in my four tens, which will give me 52. Can you still see the 12 inside 52? Working with those number bonds really helps. Remember I told you you can do this with even bigger and bigger numbers as you get good at it. In this case, we can think about 70 plus 50. We already know that equals 120. 
Now we have our 400. 400 plus 120 gives us 520. And we could keep going up and up like that with our addition. But now, Hedgie, sometimes do you find subtraction a little harder than adding? Yeah, sometimes Hedgie finds subtracting a little bit harder. But you know what that means. You just need to do it a little bit more because your brain just needs more time to think about it. Let's switch colors. All right, let's go back to where we were in the beginning. You think of the way you like best for solving uh, uh, an equation like 13 minus eight. Did you just use your memory? You might have remembered what 13 minus eight was. Or you might have said, ooh, I like that method where we pull the 10 out, cause that's a little simpler for me to think about. 10 minus eight equals two. And I put my two and my three together to get my five. Or we could count up from eight till we get to 13. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we can still use that counting up method. But again, let's think about while that method works, and I don't even mind counting with fingers, is it the best method to use as our numbers get larger? I think you know where I'm going next here, right? Okay, so again, we might remember that 13 minus eight equals five, and then we can say 13 tens minus eight tens equals 50, or we might want to pull 100 to help us do our work. Then we have 100 minus 80 equals 20, Put 20 and 30 together, and you get, you got it, 50. So that's a good strategy. Um, another way you can do it is to say, well, let me get to 100. What did I do to get there? I added 20. But I'm not there yet if I'm kind of counting on. I've got my target of 130. What do I need to get from 100 to 130? I need 30 more. And in this case, again, we put our 20 and our 30 together. Our answer is the same. So that's another way to think about it. Okay, let's do just a couple more. Can you still see the 13 in here that we've been working with? We might say 13 minus eight equals five. Picking up our 40 will give us 45. Good, that's one way. Or, well, I didn't have to erase my answer, did I? Because it won't change. Maybe what you want to do is pull the 10 out. What, what, what do I write over here? That's right, 53 minus 10 gives me 43. I've got my 10 minus eight gives me two. Put that together with my 43 and that gives me 45. Now teachers, I'm gonna show um, just two other things to think about for today, but I do, hey kiddos, do you mind if I talk directly to your teachers? Um, I do wanna say that as kids are learning these multiple methods and going back and forth in the book and in the lesson, sometimes they're going to do really, really well and then kind of midway through the lesson, they just start to get stumped. The numbers all just get jumbled in their minds and kiddos and teachers, I want you to know, that's a pretty normal part of the process. If you get to that point, sometimes it means time to take a break. Go have a quick little bike ride or walk or jump on a trampoline or maybe even play with one of your pets um, and then come back to it. This is a lot to be processing with our minds. Okay, I'm going to show you one more thing that we've really already talked about. We were talking about getting numbers close to 10. Well, we also do the same thing for getting closer, numbers close to 100. So in this equation, 234 plus 98, kiddos, can you tell your teacher at home, how would you solve it? Some of 
of you might have identified that 98 is really close to 100. And so we could say 234 plus 100 equals 334. However, we put two too many in because 100 is actually two more than 98. So we just have to remove those two and we'll get 300, help me out. 32, you got it. And so that's the answer here. Like that, so we're thinking about making our 98 closer to 100. And then how about something just, I don't know, let's just do it real, a real similar. <clears throat> let's do minus um, 96, let's say. 96 is really close to 100, but it's off by how many? Off by four. How about I just write that here? So 276 minus 100 would give me what? You got it. 176. But when we took away 100, we took away four too many. So we have to put those four back in. In this case, we have 176 plus four will give us 180. 80. Ooh, I kind of like this combo here because again, it's moving us toward a solid 10, eight tens. And then the last thing you'll see today, and kiddos, if you're working in different books, I'm going to give your teacher a, a little equation right here, show you how to do it, and then I'd like you to try multiple equations like this. How about if we have something like this? Just take out the whole thing until it's all written across, okay? Okay. All right, let's say we have an equation like that. Now, it is possible to stack this whole equation, and you might prefer to work at it like that. But when I look at numbers like this, I like to just look for combos that help me make friendly numbers. So right away, I notice a six and a four. What does that give me? That's right, that'll give me a 10. Again, I notice a seven and a three. What does that give me? Yes, that gives me another 10. All righty here, what do I like, what do I like? I think I'm going to go with nine tens, which equals 90. So I did 40 plus 50, that gave me 90. And now I have 80 plus 70, but if you think about it, it's like eight plus seven, which we just talked about equals 15. I know I have 150. I can add that all up. My zeros line up here, Woo. 9, 10, 15, 16. And that gives me how much altogether? 260, wowee! So we can add multiple strings of numbers by looking for friendly numbers within them. They don't always line up so nicely as these, but sometimes you can look for doubles or look for some of your other favorite facts. Hedgy, hey can you believe how many different kinds of math we did today? Wow, I'm really proud of you and I'm really proud of you. So I'll meet you back here next time. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.